When you think of Chicago, you think of organized crime, the Chicago outfit, the mob, right? Babyface Nelson and John Dillinger and Al Capone. Well, there's a brand new movie about the Chicago mob, the most notorious, most powerful mob Chicago's ever seen. Here, take a look at the trailer. Chicago is a gangster town. If you cross me, I could take you out. And the Chicago public schools have the same problems. The Chicago public school system is one of the most troubled in the country. Chicago has and a serious problem with public schools. 80% of our graduates are not at reading level. School closures, gun violence, racism, corruption, and teacher strikes. Constant, constant strike in all of the time. The Chicago Teachers Union walked out of the city schools Friday morning protesting. We were told we were going to strike. And I said, no, there's no way. I was encircled with teachers screaming. I feared for my life. It's definitely not my grandfather's union anymore. We've allowed a structure to exist that does not serve children. We're all to blame. They became the most powerful union in the entire state. The Chicago Teachers Union, Local One. The Chicago Way. Joining us now to talk about this brand new documentary is a representative of the institution that put it together, Miley Smith. She's the Senior Director for Labor Policy at the Illinois Policy Institute. And that's terrifying. I mean, th th you really, I mean, this is, this is organized mayhem going on with this teachers union in Chicago. It is, and, and this documentary shows how through increasingly aggressive activism, Chicago Teachers Union is placing its agenda above students, above families, even above teachers. We interview teachers for this documentary, and it's having harmful effects not just on Chicago, but on our state, on the nation. CTU is a model for other unions, and because a lot of Illinoisans did not know about CTU or their power, we produced this documentary. We wanted people to see that Chicago Teachers Union as an example of the politici politicizing of education <laughs> that um, these teachers unions are doing and the, the effects that it's having on our kids. One of the interesting things, everybody knows Chicago is pretty much a one party town. You have the Democrat primary, whoever wins that primary is gonna be the mayor. And then you see these mayors like Rahm Emanuel, who is, you know, I mean, he worked for the Obama administration, he was a congressman, he gets it, he understands. And even he had to fight against this teachers union because they're just that powerful. That's right, and there, it's actually a nonpartisan election, but you're right, for the, the majority of the candidates are Democrat that are running. And I think it really sums it up. Jesse Sharkey, who is the former um, president of the teachers union, said something a couple years ago. He said, we fought Rahm Emanuel, we fought Daly, we fight Lightfoot, we're gonna harm, or we're gonna fight whoever is the boss. Right. And that's right. exactly what we see. Um, they have infiltrated City Hall. They have funded two out of three people who are sitting in the um, City Council. They are currently funding a candidate for mayor. So, you know, they are trying to set themselves up here, not just as the organization that's running Chicago Public Schools, but really the organization that is running the entire city. Right, because so much of the city's budget goes to them. And, and of course, they, they, the old days were, you know, well, if you oppose the teachers union, you're really opposing education. You're really opposing the children. You don't want the kids to get a good education. But the tactics that you lay out here from this union, the, the, obviously this has transcended just making sure that kids have a, uh, a, a nice clean schoolroom and a well-paid teacher and new books. Right. And it's important for people to see that disconnect, that you can support your teachers. I have three kids in schools. We love our teachers, but that doesn't mean that you have to support the teachers union. And we have seen CTU become incre increasingly more political, more activist since 2010, when um, CORE, which is a slate of leaders, took over. Um, since then, strikes have become the go-to weapon against the district. They've walked out on students five times since 2012. Before that, there hadn't been a strike for 25 years. We've seen their focus shift to politics above all else. We see that in their demands. Their demands aren't necessarily about benefits and wages, those things that we typically think about for negotiations. 
they've demanded defunding the police. They've demanded affordable housing. And like I said, we've talked about spending. They have spent more than $17 million on politics since this leadership took over. And it, it is something that we saw a need for people to understand that disconnect that you were pointing out. Well, and unlike a political action committee who will emphasize the same policies, this is a union, this is a labor union. So they fall under very different criteria in terms of scrutiny and oversight and things like that. But I gotta say, Marley Smith, a lot of people watching this right now are gonna respond. They're gonna shout back to the television. They're gonna say, well, listen, the teachers, the teachers vote for these people they put them in leadership, they're getting what they voted for and getting what they wanted until the teachers stand up and change their leadership. This is what you get. Why should we extend grace to individual teachers and say, well, I know it's not you, it's your leadership, because they vote for them. Well, it's definitely a culture of bullying. Um, and in the documentary, we highlight Ifoma Nkemdi, who talks about crossing the picket line in 2019 and how she was surrounded by teachers screaming at her, how she feared for her life. And that's not an isolated event. When teachers leave the teachers union and take away those that dues money that they have been funneling into the union, it is not received well. Mm -hmm. And they have lists of teachers. They know who is or is not a member. And those teachers are, are harassed, they're bullied. Um, and we're thankful for teachers like Joe O'Cool, who's in the documentary, who's a math teacher, who started a chess club to keep kids off the streets, for um, Ifoma, those people who are speaking out, because there's a lot of people that are afraid to talk. And these teachers are making helping others to see that I'm not alone. There are others who feel the same as me. And it is giving people really the the nerve to want to walk out as well. Well, and here we go, because we try to be solutions oriented here. And I think Ms. Smith, uh, uh, the first step is to just shine a light on it, which you've done with this documentary. It's called right. Local One. Um, but, but then what's the next steps? What needs to happen here? Because it seems so insurmountable. They seem so powerful. And as I said, it's a one party town in Chicago. And ultimately that one party, they're pretty much in bed with the, the union. Yeah, the, the next step that is immediately coming is to vote. Um, we have a mayoral election that is coming up at the end of February. Um, and it's important for people to know who the candidates are, where they're getting their money, in 2021, the Illinois General Assembly passed legislation that um, is phasing in an elected school board for Chicago public schools, culminating in a school board of 21 elected members by 2027. So that's another opportunity for the people of Chicago um, to go out and vote. They can also be, you know, sharing this documentary. This isn't just a Chicago no, incidents. It sure isn't. Yeah. Unions yeah. have control over schools in all of the major cities. Um, the American Federation of Teachers, which is the parent union, just last year gave $35.7 million toward politics and lobbying. Mm. So this is something that is intrinsic in the unions and people all over the United States need to be aware of and watching in their own towns. Just have about a minute left here, but I, I raised the specter a little bit of tongue in cheek, uh, Al Capone and John Dillinger in the Chicago way. Is there an element of criminality though it, within the union? I mean, it's not unheard of. Unions have been sort of interwoven with organized crime in the past. The way they're behaving, it almost sounds like a RICO thing. So it's interesting that you bring that up. We do talk to former CTU members in this documentary, one of which was a former CTU leader. And he talks about the, the way that the money is, is funneled through the union and how the members are being deceived in terms of how this money is being used. But one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize, especially members, is that once you have paid money to this union, they're not a government entity. Like you said, they're not regulated like some organizations are, and they could do with your money whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And um, we see from their own documents, only 19% of Chicago Teachers Union's spending last year was on representing teachers. Right. Which is cool. When you think of something, that's supposed to that's, be their purpose. That's fraud. That's fraud. That's and you know, it wasn't too long ago when there was a very brave attorney general of the United States who investigated the, uh, the intersection between these unions and organized crime. He was a Democrat. His name was Bobby Kennedy. And boy, that party's come a long way from there. Miley Smith, great stuff, great documentary. Thanks for joining us. More to come on O'Connor tonight.